In this lesson, we're going to introduce iAssemblies. An iAssembly is a configuration of an assembly which we can go back and determine which components we want to utilize to make up specific members that will make up the children of the given iAssembly factory. The file that I have open is armassembly.iam and it can be found in your chapter 9 exercise folder. Inside of this assembly we have the full arm and this is an eye part and we're going to utilize that eye part to switch out the different members of that to help us create different configurations for this assembly. I'm going to start off by clicking the tools pull down and from the tools pull down we're going to go down and click on create eye assembly and once we do that the eye assembly author dialog box will appear it looks very familiar to those of you that have already gone through the eye part lesson and we're going to pretty much build it up the exact same way from the full arm you'll see that it's already expanded here and we have different options so if you would go ahead and you would click on the top level part and bring it over it's going to bring over all of these entries in this case that's not what I want to do and if you do that it is going to start to populate the bottom down here and the more that you do that the more complex it's going to look so in this case what I'm going to do is select on the table replace option and that will allow me to switch to the different members where I can go back and determine which one of those I parts will be utilized in each one of those for the pivot shaft 01 I'm going to expand that as well and in this case what I want to do is I'm going to use the include exclude option where I can go back and determine do I need that shaft for specific members so I'll go ahead and add that we also have other tabs up here as you can see so we can go back and determine the parameters that you want to use or not use for the properties and that's going to be the I property information for the exclusion we have a few more controls for including and excluding you'll also notice that the components are available here but since we've already done that from the components tab we don't need to do that here again more controls with the iMates and bill of materials so now let's start to build up our iAssembly and I'm going to do this the exact same way that we did with the iParts I'm going to insert another row and you'll notice that the naming convention is already happen happening for me automatically. If you click under the Options tab, click under the Options button, you'll see in this dialog box, this is where you can determine how that naming convention is going to automatically be set up for you. So now that we have this, I'm just going to keep the original names and numbers here. I'm just going to bring this over so we can see it a little bit cleaner. Now for the full arm 01, I'm going to go back and say for this specific configuration for number 2, I am not going to have the shaft. And let's go back and I'm going to insert another row. Now for this arm assembly 03, what I'd like to do is I'm going to switch out that, that base component and I'm going to use arm number 2. And then let's go back and I'm going to insert another row. And you'll notice in this case it's a direct replication of that last row that we had. And well, let's go back here. Let's make a change here. Let's go back and include the first shaft and we'll exclude it out of the second. So you can see it's very easy to go back and make changes here. I'm going to go ahead and click on the verify option. In this case, that's telling me that there are no errors. So just a quick review, the member column here, this is going to be the file name that will actually be written out to the hard drive and the part number that will be used inside of your parts list and bill of material. For now, let's go ahead and click OK. And our iAssembly has been created. I have another entry in the browser called Table. And now if I just go back and double click on each one of these here, you'll see that we have our different configurations. So in number two, just that shaft was deleted. And in number three, you'll see that that main component was brought back out. And in number four, the shaft has been removed. So what I'd like to do next is I want to add another component back in here. And what I'm going to slide on over here, there's a toolbar that appears when you're doing editing for iParts and iAssemblies. And if I expand this first area here, I have two different options. I can edit the, 
entire factory scope, meaning the change that we're going to do will affect everything globally, or I can do just a member scope. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back and make ARM Assembly 1 active, and with our scope set back to the factory, I'm going to go ahead and place in a component like you normally would. I'm going to place in this pivot. And very quickly what I'll do is we'll assemble that. So I'm just going to use assembly constraint. Just hit C. I can apply an insert constraint. Everything looks pretty good. So now if I go back and make these different assemblies active, you'll notice that the pivot base is visible in all of them. So let's go back. I can edit the eye assembly. Just like we were able to edit an eye part, you can right click on that table and you can edit it via spreadsheet or the table. Or we can use our entry right here to go back and re-edit our eye assembly. And you'll notice that the column did not appear for that pivot base, being that it's being utilized for every single member. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to cancel out of that since we didn't make any changes. I'm going to delete that base that we just created. And just to show the difference here, I'm going to change it to the edit member scope. And let's go back and make arm assembly one current. And let's do the exact same scenario here. And again, we'll apply an assembly constraint. So it looks pretty good. Now let's go back and see what happens. If I go back and make ARM Assembly 2 current, you'll notice that the pivot base is not appearing. Let's go back and edit the I assembly. And let's take a look at what happened. You'll notice that it added two columns for me. The first column that it added here is the include exclude option for that base. If I expand this out, that's the pivot base. And it also went and added a column here for the insert constraint. So we can go back and easily change that. So let's also say for option number three, I would like to include that where we should probably also include the assembly constraint so it can build itself back up. Again, we'll go ahead and click OK. And let's just verify that everything's working just by double clicking on them. And you can see that everything is. For the next portion, what I'd like to do is we can go back and we can have Inventor automatically generate all of the given assemblies and files that would be required to create these. In this case, I held down the Control key and I highlighted all four of my different members. And I'm going to right click, click on Generate Files. And Inventor is going to go back and it's going to make these changes for us and save everything. And this will save us a lot of time later on down the road. So this is highly recommended. Otherwise, when you go back and place in or utilize a different member here, you will be asked to make all of your saves. So next what I'd like to do is let's save this assembly. And then I'm going to create a drawing view from this. So what I'd like to do is show how we're going to document this. So we're going to do the exact same steps. I'm going to create a base view. So in, in this case here, you'll see that we have the dialog box with a couple more options being that this is an I assembly. I'm going to go back to the model state. And this is where I can determine when I place this drawing view, which member should that view be based on? In this case, I'm going to change it to the 01 base. And I'm just going to place in that view. And let's go ahead and project off a couple of views. So there's no difference working with this I assembly as though it's any other part or assembly. Now let's change to the annotation panel. And then from here, what I'd like to do is create a parts list. Just going to pick a point in the view. I'll change it to the build material view. And let's place it right up here. So if I zoom back up here, 
you'll notice that it's not giving me any description so I didn't type any in but what I'd really like to do for the quantity I'd like to see the quantity for all four members that we created and that's pretty easy to do I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna edit the parts list and we have an entry that's now available right up here called member selection if I pick on that this is where I can go back and determine which one of the members do I want to go back and place into this parts list I'll take all four click, click OK now if I move this over you can see that I'm getting the quantity information for all four members so now in this case what I'd like to do is let's take a look at the table and the table I'm gonna again select the view so I'll be consistent and pick on the front view but in case it really didn't matter click on the column chooser and this is where I'm gonna go back and add information in this case I'm gonna add all of the available columns of course in this case I can also go back and move the columns up or down I can take all the defaults click OK and we'll place in the table so now that's giving me more information and in which options were utilized for every single member.